Hello guys and welcome back to Between the Ropes TV. Now firstly, I've got an apology to make. We were busy, we didn't get round to a reaction to the heavyweight world title fight between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua. For those who don't know, Usyk did win, I was wrong. So I'm looking forward to Ray getting back from his holidays because he will be on my case about that. All deserved though, but this video He's about what's next for Anthony Joshua. You know, he he talked in his post-fight. He had a slightly uh, bizarre rant, and I'd love to get your thoughts on what people made of that. There's two sides to it, isn't it? It didn't look good, but then also the way he broke down in the post-fight press conference sort of suggests there may be a possible mental health issue there. Um, and he's been under pressure for a lot of years, so I can see both schools of thought, but I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on that as well. What do you make of it? But regardless, he wants to continue his career. He's only 32. You know, why shouldn't he, in fairness to him? He's got his long-term deal with DAZN. Uh, and I think he's, you know, probably going to be setting records uh, for the best paid fighter without being world title fights, uh, if the figures are to be believed. So where does he go? Who's the opponents that he can realistically look at? You know, DAZN are going to be one of making a splash with his first fight exclusively on their platform worldwide particularly in the uk and it's tough now because you've got to also have a longer term vision in mind so the first option i'm thinking is dylan white now as we all know dylan white also coming off a massive world title fight loss to tyson fury back in april uh, at wembley stadium and again there's no shame in either defeat so we could be talking in 15 years about how fury and music are two of the best to ever do it so there's certainly no shame in third and fourth or third and fifth, depending on your rankings, going at it. And it's a massive, massive fight. The first fight back in December 2015 was absolute fireworks. They don't like each other. There's that natural needle. And in reality, it's going to be best at uh, both fighters' best paydays outside of Fury, Usyk, and possibly Wilder. So it would make sense. And I think rankings-wise, you know, it certainly puts the winner back into contention for a world title fight if that's the route that they want to go so the dylan white fight makes natural sense now it's worth mentioning that dylan white is a free agent currently uh he has always been on a fight by fight deal with eddie Hearn, matt Troom, when he was with sky then across to the zone uh obviously his last fight was on bt because of the purse bid situation but there are rumors that dylan white's quite close to agreeing a wba world regular title shot whatever the hell they call that belt against Daniel Dubois, and that's also a massive fight. Uh, and I'd be interested to see the figures involved, because surely fighting Anthony Joshua is a bigger payday. However, depends how much you value that regular world title, doesn't it, if you're Dylan White. So there's a fight to be made. That's option one for me, Joshua White. Sells out the O2, possibly even a bigger, uh, bigger, bigger venue. But that's one option. Option two for me would be the Andy Ruiz trilogy. Now, as we all know, in a couple of weeks, Andy Ruiz is facing Luis Ortiz. Now, we also remember the two fights that they had back in 2019, Ruiz and Joshua. And it's 1-1, isn't it? Obviously, very well documented. Ruiz won the first right, uh, first fight by a seventh round TKO. Joshua then outboxed him in Saudi Arabia in the rematch. So it's 1-1. The trilogy makes obvious sense provided Ruiz can come through Luis Ortiz. The only issue that you may have is Joshua said he'd like to be out in November. Eddie Hearn said, go and have a couple of weeks holiday. We'll look for December. Uh, and, you know, in fairness to Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearn likes to have his Christmas crackers. He would definitely be one side of that. So that would be a great fight. I just don't think it would come in December. It would be into early next year. But another great option. Third and finally for me is Otto Wallin. Now, Otto Wallin, probably best remembered for having his fight with Tyson Fury. And he caused Fury all sorts of problems, didn't he? Uh, and again, two schools of thought. Option one being Wallin's a world-level heavyweight who can cause anybody problems on, on his night. But we didn't see that in a recent fight against Camille Sokolowski, who is a journeyman. And while he's a tough man, he caused Wallin far, far more problems than he realistically should have. Uh, and then, obviously, the second school of thought being Tyson Fury. We've seen it in the past. He str struggles to get up for a not big fight. So 
he'll rise to the occasion is a better better way of saying that. Um, but also, what he carries name value. Potentially, if you're the zone and you've got to pay Anthony Joshua this reported 100 million fee, you're going to be wanting a cheaper opponent. Now, you're not going to get that with Andrew Ruiz. He's had a taste of the riches at Madison Square Gardens and then again in Saudi. You're not going to get that with Dylan White, but you might get it with Otto Wallin because Dimitri Salita, he's an ex-pro, now promoter, has talked quite re quite regularly about how Otto Wallin can't get an opportunity in the heavyweight division. People don't want to fight him, etc. Well, if Anthony Joshua did... If you're at a while in, you're going to take the fight, aren't you? Because it puts you right out there. You're headlining in the UK. You probably take confidence from Joshua's post-fight antics and the fact that, you know, he's now lost three times as a pro. And although he's avenged the Ruiz, he's lost rightly so twice to Usyk, although the second fight was a much, much better performance. So you're going to take confidence from that. I think that's the key. So I can see why it would be attractive to Wallin, even on a smaller purse. And it's still a name value. If Joshua could fight Wallin and dispatch of him in much better fashion than Tyson Fury did, again, it throws him right back into contention for a potential world title fight. You know, I think we need to see ultimately, they're my top three options. Personally, as a fan, I'd like to see the Dylan White fight. However, commercially, I'd probably put him in there with Otto Wallin for the reasons I've just said. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section on an opponent and anyone else that you may like to see him in with. The key for me is activity. That's what Anthony Joshua needs. He's always been at his best when he's most active, when he's fighting three and four times a year. And Eddie Hearn's talking about that, in fairness. He said, you know, he'd like to see him out certainly again this year, December, pop three or four times next year. And now he's not like the ties of mandatories. He can, he can have a bit more fun. And while I, I appreciate Matt Rumor putting that sort of spin on it, to try and create buzz and interest. It's also quite true. So I'm excited to see what he can do. There's some great fights domestically for him that don't involve a belt. And there's some great fights worldwide. As always, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.